We talk about Esprit. It's a brand that I remember as a child. It was a very popular brand here in the, in the United States and North America. It kind of waned after a little while and then kind of faded away. It's now back, new management, of course, uh, new investors and new markets uh, that you're pushing into right now. Uh, why revive the brand? What was the impetus behind that? So the brand is actually still around. It's been around since 1968. What happened is that it left the North American market about 25 years ago and it kind of re-entered, but really it turned into a European brand over the last 20 years. So it's coming back now, and not just to open stores. I've moved the, the brand and headquarters to New York City just two months ago. Okay. So, so now it is a Esprit New York brand, designed, created for the world, but in the US. When you first took over Esprit, you were based right in Hong Kong, if I'm correct? That's correct, yes. What was the decision to start it there in Hong Kong, and why move the headquarters to New York? It was actually listed in 1993 on the Hong Kong Stock Exchange, and it still is today. This year is the 30th year of listing. So over there, it's where the financial headquarters are and also where the factory sourcing group is. Is there, where is the client base focus right now? Is it Asia, is it Europe? Is it now going to be North America? It's now going to be North America. Right now, there's a billion dollar business in Europe as it is, but in North America, it's a brand new market. It's like a startup, but it's going to be much more elevated. We're coming back elevated. When you say elevated, what does that mean? Higher quality clothes, higher fashion, what? Much higher design, quality, and fit. These are the three things that have been missing for 20 years. So we've changed 250 factories to really high quality factories uh, uh, out in Asia, and also we've changed the design uh, completely. Is that what customers are asking for right now? That's sort of the trend that we're moving towards? This is what the customer is asking for. This is what the brand is from the very beginning of its DNA. It was a sustainable, organic cotton brand from the 80s and good design, so this is what we're bringing back. This is what the customer remembers from the 80s and 90s. How strong is that brand name, that brand recognition going to be? I mean, you know, particularly in North America, it seems like every day you have sort of a new, uh, hot new designer coming out with uh, their own line of clothes. You obviously have all the legacy uh, designers out there as well. How does Esprit fit into that? So the brand recognition is, is uh, uncomparable. Everywhere you go, whether it's New York and Australia and England, uh, in Korea, everybody remembers the brand from before. So that's already there. We opened the pop-up in uh, Soho in, in December, and so many customers submitting their stories and pictures and memories about the brand. So that is there already. And it used to be uh, one of the top 10 brands uh, a long time ago, and I think we can quickly do that if we do the execution correctly. What's the pricing like in that execution? I mean, what, uh, where do you sort of position yourselves on that price scale for consumers? So it, it would depend on what kind of materials we use. So the pricing would be anywhere uh, upwards of 1200 for a very nice uh, hero part of our collection. But the bulk of it is going to be right around somewhere between 100 to, to $400 range, depending on Is that what considered is. accessible, or is that kind of considered more kind of elite? I would say it's affordable luxury, uh, premium quality at a good price. What about your own cost, particularly when it comes to sourcing the materials, getting the things made, and then shipping them to wherever they need to go? Exactly. So. When I came on board, there was about 250 factories, but they were all geared towards fast fashion. Esprit was never fast fashion. So we've hand-selected each one, we've met with the owners, and really did a lot of due diligence, making sure that they comply with our sustainability standards as well as quality. Who's designing these? So this is designed out of New York uh, by a team. It's uh, led by Tom Cosson, who used to be at Helmut Lang, and he works very closely with product officer and also our new chief brand officer, Anne Angelic, who joined in November. You mentioned a pop-up store in the Soho neighborhood of New York. Are we going to see more, I guess, brick and mortar stores out here in the, in the United States from Esprit? Yes, exactly. So this year we're going to open in key markets, including uh, next week in Soho for a longer term location, Flatirons in another location, Los Angeles, Vancouver, Miami is this year. And next year we're going to open up in more cities across the nation. There's been a lot of discussion about economic conditions here in the U.S. worldwide, the potential for an economic recession. Expanding your brand, expanding your company in that environment, how do you do it? So we took this view last July when inflation was out of control, but we took a view that that would be the peak. And it turns out that was true because it takes about one year for retail to plan the design and the rollout, the assortment. So now, I guess just a couple of hours ago, the Fed has confirmed the view of, of unlikely recession. So I think this is a good time for our rollout. We've been planning this for over a year, and uh, later this year, hopefully, there's a J recovery in the, uh, in the consumer uh, sentiment. I do have to ask you a, a final question here, and it's really about the marketing of the brand. Uh, a lot of brands take different approaches. Some just kind of go direct to the consumer. They use social media. Some will go out and hire 
big celebrities to, to wear their stuff and, and, and be, promote, uh, be the promoters for it. What strategy are you taking? We're actually taking portfolio effect to, to, the, to the marketing. We have the traditional out of home, the print, the media, the magazines, and also we have the influencer aspect, social media, but that's one component. But within there, we're also going very granular to the micro communities. For example, uh, in, in Soho, we're reaching out to the downtown community first. We're really geo-targeting rather than just clustering with uh, random advertisement. That's interesting when you say geo-targeting. So you have that amount of data where you're able to do that in a way that's useful to you? Correct, yes. We put together a data team to really analyze this so that we really connect with the consumer. So as I said before, we're not just going to randomly do things. We want to make sure whoever is representing us really represents the brand as well because people really look up to brands these days and we're such a happy brand.